Recording in progress. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, everyone, we are live. Uh, thanks, Tina. You're welcome. Can you hear me okay, uh, Jeanette? I can. I'm just... Um... And you can see me, right? I. We can see you. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm just going to now call the meeting to order. It is 10.13. And so our first item of business is the election of the officers. So I just want to know, are there any nominations out there for the election of the chair? I would like to nominate Neil to continue in that role. And is there a seconder for that? I would second. I would second that. Perfect. And are there any other nominations? So seeing none, I just need a motion to close nominations. A mover and a seconder. I'll move that motion. I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect, that's carried. Um, so now we just need um, to ask Mr. Allen. Neil, do you accept that nomination as chair? Uh, yeah, I would accept that. Thank you. Perfect. And now we just need um, uh, nominations for uh, vice chair. Now, would would we go? Could we go with Kurt again, or does he have to be present? Um, we could, and I can just confirm with him through email if he would be willing to accept it. And if not, then we would just redo it at the next meeting. Okay. That, that, that would be my suggestion, but I'm open to anyone. <laughs> Is there a seconder for that nomination? I'll second. Okay. And is there any other nominations for vice chair? So seeing none, I just need a mover and seconder um, to close nominations. I'll move. And a seconder? I'll second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Um, so, Mr. Allen, I will turn the meeting over to you. All right. Oh, sorry, that's my cat. She just. Um, all right. Sorry for that. Um, I'd like to move to um, adopt the agenda then uh, for the the meeting uh, March eighth. Uh, can I get a motion for that? I'll carry that motion. All right. All right, and all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, uh, point four, any disclosure or uh, pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? 
I don't believe that there are. Um, point five, the adoption of the admits from the uh, December 6th meeting. Um, but did anybody have any changes or, or, or corrections that they that needed, uh, that needed to be made to that? No, I move that the minutes from the December 6, 2022 meeting be adopted as written. All right. And I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, number six, deputations and uh, uh, presentations. Uh, so, Janet, you uh, um, have a, a, a thing here that you uh, want to uh, uh, bring to uh, the committee? For sure. So I'm just going to give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. So um, is everybody seeing my screen now? Not yet. It's yeah, just loading up. Okay. okay. Can everybody see my screen? There we go. Yep, it just has and come is, up. And is it's the citizen transparency democracy slide? Awesome. Correct. Yep. So this is just a little bit of an overview, a little bit of training on um, how a committee functions. So um, just a little bit of what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the County of Frontenac procedural bylaw because it is the County of Frontenac committee. We're going to look a little bit about meeting management. We're going to talk a little bit about pecuniary interest and what that is, and then a little bit about the code of conduct for members of county council and committees, because it does cover both council and its committees, and then just a little bit briefly about the county of Frontenac integrity commissioner. So in terms of the procedural bylaw, um, the municipal act uh, requires that all municipalities in Ontario do have a procedural bylaw. And both the Municipal Act and the Procedural Bylaw require that all of our meetings are open to the public, except for certain circumstances. So that was one of the reasons why we had to pause just a little bit this morning to get that live YouTube stream up so that the public is able to watch the meeting. Um, the Procedural Bylaw also has a purpose um, to make sure that we're seeking and achieving consensus in an orderly fashion at our meetings. Um, as well as it governs council and the committee. So both council and the committees do have to adhere to our procedural bylaw. So a little bit about the committee mandate. So this is the Joint Frontenac Accessibility Advisory Committee. Um, committee advisory committees, they are created by council. So um, council has the option to choose what committees it has and what it doesn't. The Accessibility Advisory Committee is just a little bit different in a sense that it's mandated under the AODA. Um, advisory committees can only do what they are authorized to do by council. So that's what's actually in your mandate. So you can't go outside of that mandate to discuss other items. Um, advisory committees are only mandated to advise council. So when the committee makes recommendations, they're only advice to council and any recommendations that the committee makes needs to go to council to be fully ratified before any action can be taken. So this is just a quick overview of what the mandate is of the Accessibility Advisory Committee. So it's to advise councils on their legislative requirements and implementation of the accessibility standards and the preparation of accessibility reports. So we obviously we have a report on the agenda today that the committee will advise on, and that's our annual status report. Last year, you will recall that um, the committee also advised on the multi-year accessibility plan. Um, you're also to review in a timely manner site plans under the Planning Act. Um, so you as well have another one of those on your agenda today from the Township of Central Frontenac that you will be reviewing and providing advice on. Um, in consultation with council and staff, you are to review new and existing municipal bylaws and policies as they are applicable. So we have a number of policies that have accessibility requirements built into them. And when we have those policies, the committee provides advice on. So one of those policies that the committee looked at last year, for example, was the KMP trail and the, um, the trails bylaw. Um, you work with uh, council and the community at large to identify and address the needs of persons with disabilities within your community. 
So many times you do this um, through the committee, you'll bring items to the committee where you have found in your townships that are not working or, or perhaps uh, creating barriers for those with disabilities. And then lastly, you provide recommendations to council on the promotion of public awareness and understanding of the needs of persons with disabilities. So a little bit about the duties of the chair, and I'll go through this quickly. Mr. Allen has been the chair of this committee since, since I've been here, and he's done a wonderful job. But really, those duties are to ensure that you're preserving decorum and that the meeting is functioning properly and running smoothly. Um, any motions, they're submitted through the chair. Uh, the chair puts to vote on those motions. Anybody speaking speaks through the chair to the committee. Um, you ensure that the rules of procedure are being followed. <clears throat> There's also some other ones there to, for example, to decline to put to a vote motions which do not comply with the rules of procedure um, or are not within the jurisdiction of the committee. So if a committee member brought forward a motion that was not within the committee's mandate, it would be the chair's responsibility to, um, to call that out and remove it from the agenda. Um, to restrain members, if any of you seem to get rowdy or out of control, <clears throat> which I'm hoping would never happen, but. Um, and then you also call members when they're breaching the rules of procedure. <clears throat> so definition of a meeting. So a meeting under the Municipal Act and under our procedural bylaw is when a quorum of the members of council or committee are present to discuss issues in a way that materially advances the business or decision-making of council or committee. So it's not proper to discuss committee business via email. Um, and it's not, and it's inappropriate, for example, to meet at a local coffee shop to discuss committee business. Um, if you're meeting just to, for a social gathering and you're not advancing the business of the committee, then that wouldn't be considered a meeting. So it's only when you're there to discuss the business of the committee and advance the committee business. Um, public notice requirements. So under section 270 of the Municipal Act, it does require that we have an open and transparent uh, transparency and accountability policy. And in that it identifies how we provide notice to the public. So for the County of Frontenac, all we provide notice through the publishing of our agenda, of our agendas, <laughs> excuse me, on our civic web portal. And so they go out every Friday and that's how the public receives notice. So um, it's important that we follow that rule. It's also important that we have adherence to the agenda. So the agenda is how we provide that public notice and what is actually going to be discussed in a meeting. So items should not be added to the agenda at a meeting as this provides no public notice. So there is a section of other business in our procedural bylaw, but this is only for statements by members. So for example, if something is happening in your community and you wanna let the public or the, community, or the committee know, then you can make that statement under other business or if it's matters of urgency, and urgency basically is that it cannot wait until the next meeting. <clears throat> um, just a little bit about committee minutes. They are not verbatim minutes. So the discussion at the meeting is, is, is what goes into those committee meetings. So we wanna ensure that discussion at meetings is centered around those agenda items. Um, and then minutes are prepared by and recorded by the secretary of the committee, which is myself. Um, and they're subject to change only by the full committee. So that's why we have the adoption of the minutes at each meeting. <clears throat> so just now to talk a little bit about declaration of pecuniary interest. So you are required um, where a member either on his or own behalf or while acting for or through another person has a pecuniary interest direct or indirect. So a direct pecuniary interest is where it affects you directly or an indirect pecuniary interest um, where it affects somebody under, which will be discussed in the next slide. So as you can see on our agenda, prior to any consideration, you have to declare a pecuniary interest. You cannot take part in any discussion if you have declared a pecuniary interest on that matter. And you cannot attempt before, after, or during the meeting to sway any members of the committee in terms of the way they vote. So declaration of pecuniary interest. So indirect 
pecuniary interest is when you as a member might be a shareholder or of another agency. Um, you may have a partner or a person who is employed with another agency. So the interests of certain persons that are deemed to be indirect are your parent, your spouse, or a child. So if it's an aunt and uncle that are going to gain a pecuniary benefit, you don't have to declare that. Although it's probably in your best interest to at least say that I do have a relative. But the ones that you do have to declare for are parent, spouse, and child. And basically what is pecuniary interest? It's where you're gonna find a financial benefit. It's money. So again, if there's an item on the agenda where it could potentially gain you a pecuniary interest, you must declare. Or if there's an item on the agenda where it could either gain a financial asset to where you work or where you actually are a shareholder or where it's a parent, spouse or child, then again, you do have to declare that pecuniary interest. So just very quickly on our code of conduct, it is for members of county council and committees. It was adopted by county council in 2019. It covers councillor and councillors and committee members, and that includes advisory committees such as yourself. So you are all bound by that code of conduct and you are required to acknowledge that you have read it, you understand it and you accept it. So it was attached to the agenda today. And just in terms of committees and committee members, so it applies to all members of council and it applies to all members of committees, agencies, boards, and commissions. So the purpose of that code of conduct is to establish a general standard to ensure that all members share a common basis for acceptable conduct to which all members are expected to adhere and comply with. It sets a high standard of conduct for members and it provides good governance and a high level of public confidence in the administration of the County of Frontenac. And it also ensures that we operate from a foundation of integrity, transparency, justice, truth, honesty, and courtesy. So within that code of conduct under section seven, it talks about gifts and benefits. So any gift to a member risks the appearance of improper influence. Um, so gifts may be improperly induced influence or create an incentive for a member to make decisions on a basis of that relationship rather than the best interests of the county. So section 7.2 outlines when a member is entitled to accept a gift or a benefit. Um, and if you do accept a gift, you do have to disclose it with the clerk. So I believe the limit on a gift is $25. So anything over $25, you do have to um, declare. And last but not least is the integrity commissioner. So the role of the integrity commissioner is that they, uh, they will investigate any alleged contraventions of the code of conduct and key sections under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. So if we get a complaint from, we could get potentially complaints from the public that number one, somebody may have had a pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act and did not declare it. So the integrity commissioner can investigate that. Or if a member contravenes the code of conduct, um, for example, I don't know, they accepted a large gift from somebody, didn't declare it, um, or had behavior that was against the code of conduct, the integrity commissioner can investigate that. Um, it's certainly not meant, and I believe that's the end of the slideshow, it's certainly not meant to scare anybody in any way, but it's just to give you a brief overview that we are required to be open and transparent to the public and to ensure that we have gov good governance um, to ensure public trust. So it's just a brief overview um, for the committee on how committees function and some of the rules that you um, have to abide by. <laughs> and I believe that I will stop sharing now. Thanks, Jack. It's always good to get a refresher. Does anybody have any questions? All right, I'll move on to the next point then, and that's the site plan reviews, uh, the Sherman Lake uh, Beach Washroom Project. 
is uh, um, did Noah want to speak to that now then? So Noah Greer is is on um, <clears throat> is on the call with us along with Jody. Um, so Neil, if it's okay, I'm just going to share my screen so that I'm able to pull up these drawings and then perhaps Noah can take us through them. Okay. So Noah, are you able to see this now? Yep, yeah, that looks good. Perfect. So just let me know when you want me to advance down to the next one. Uh, yeah, sure. So a quick overview of what the whole committee is. We're the Charlotte Lake Washroom Committee. Um, myself and Craig Middleton's here as well. He's part of the committee and a member of council in Central. Um, basically, we're in the planning and development stage right now, I would say. Um, we we would just like to get some designs and some input on a possible new washroom facility at the beach, at our public beach. Um, this right here, this set of drawings, we procured from Concord Engineering just to sort of give us a preliminary design draft that we could take to accessibility committees and hopefully cancel at some point, but it's just uh, give us a quick idea of like what we could do with the space we have and the conditions that are there. So what we're looking for from you guys, I guess, would just be any input at all on the design of how we could make it more accessible. And we have a couple of design options so far. This is the one from the engineer. So I guess, you can kind of scroll through this document and um, take a look at that. <laughs> so this is the uh, site plan. So where that the black highlighted sort of uh, box is down there is where we plan on putting the, the new washroom and that's in our existing beach slash park. There's one there already. There's an existing washroom sort of north of that. And um, yeah, we plan on we don't plan on keeping that as a washroom there. We plan on turning it into a sort of more of a supply room area, but the new washroom will be sort of in the corner, back corner of the beach. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for that slide. I, I did have a quick question there, uh, Noah. Um, yes. Yeah. It's Neil. Um, is this a, a new, will this be a new build or is this a retrofit of an existing building? This will be a new build. A brand new build, okay. So yeah, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, so this is the floor plan of what the engineers presented to us. So the idea is um, the, the bottom part of your screen where it's the ramp and the covered porch that's going to face our medical center. And there's already an asphalt road that comes down there to a parking area. So the idea would be to just be able to have that ramp sort of connected to the asphalt where people can go and park down there like they already do and walk right from the asphalt of the medical center right up to the washroom. Um, then what the engineers presented to us is on the, the room to your right, when you first walk in, that'll be a, uh, an accessible sort of change room with a bench there, just enough room <coughs> for a wheelchair to turn around and fit in. It's the largest room there. That's sort of a, a change room. And then on your left is just the supply room, not very large, just whatever we need in there, whether we have water services and electrical in there. And then the, uh, the room up there on the right in the middle is another accessible washroom, I believe. And the rest of them are just, I don't believe they're large enough for accessibility. I believe the ones that are, are the ones with the circle and the, uh, the rectangle, but the other ones are just typical washrooms, toilet sink, um, nothing crazy, probably a mirror in each of them. And then that hallway down the middle going in and out of the covered porch on the front there. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, I think that's that's it in, on the PDF. Were there additional ones in the Word document that was sent? Um, yeah, I think Tyson made um, a little revision to that. Just it's not nothing's final here. Obviously, we're kind of just looking for input, but right. he made more of an open floor plan sort of idea. I think if it's in that Word document that he sent you. So, are you able to see it now? Men's, women's. Uh, no. Okay, let me stop sharing and I'll pull up the. Um, if I could make a, a quick uh, suggestion, Noah. Um, yeah. Uh, just looking at the plans here, um, especially for the uh, wheelchair accessible washroom. Um, is, do, you, are you able, do you know if there's going to be like a drop down table? Um, I mean, sometimes a change table um, uh, works too, but I know sometimes that if someone's uh, with different types of disabilities, sometimes they'll have supplies with them that they'll need to use while they're in the washroom. And uh, I know like when, I, when I'm traveling, I, I usually have just a small supply bag that I take with me but if, when I need to, to access the washroom. And it's nice to have some place to set that rather than on the floor. Um, a lot of times I'll use uh, like the baby change table, uh, if there's one uh, in in the accessible washroom, we just fold it down and use that to set my stuff on. Um, I just wanted to, to just sort of bring that bring that up that something like that is sort of handy to have uh, in 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 the accessible washroom because it just saves people that have certain types of supplies that they might have to use um, in the washroom. It gives them some place to set them rather than on the ground. Yeah, that's like that's exactly the type of ideas that we we came to you guys looking for. Because this right now, we we are just hoping to take as many ideas as possible from you guys and be able to bring them back to the engineer. And if we do want to make any design changes, we want to incorporate any accessibility issues that you guys find into those design but changes. I'd also like to uh, just to, I'd like to add to that. So you right uh, on I guess with what I'm seeing now on the screen, the the on the right side, you walk into the washroom, and that first one on the right is where there would be like a full length ta a ch change table, care table, correct? Yeah. Is is what I do? I don't see any plumbing in that room. So my question is: is if there's no, is there plumbing in that room or no? It would just be a room with a bench. No, I think that's more of like an actual just big change room. For sure. Now, I mean, certain people who require, say, catheterizations need a place to lay down and, and have a care worker support them with that. If that would be what I would use that room for. But if there's no sink, then there's nowhere for me to, to sanitize my hands, to wash my hands, or, or regardless of that, depending on your needs. So I would just flag that... Um, even, you know, most rooms should at least have a sink uh, so that uh, people can properly sanitize when when doing whatever care they need within the wash. Yeah, that's a great idea. That'll be definitely something we bring back to them. And hopefully that'll, we'll be able to incorporate that into the new design with any just change room area. It'd be, it'd be good to have a sink <clears> in there. Even if there's no toilet, it, it's, it's good to have a sink. It's uh, Craig Middleton here. Um, one thing we got to keep in mind is our septic system only allows us to have so many sources, like between toilets, urinals, and sinks. I think the number was like around nine items. Okay, thank you for that. Then, then I would I would recommend is that you still have a sink to help sanitize and figure out where you can make that up from another stall or even potentially having one larger stall like that back accessible bathroom to also be the one that has the bench in it. So that if that is a required care to use the washroom that you could use it. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I think if we can, if we have to choose between having sort of to one change room or an accessible room without the bench, I think it, we just, it'd make more sense to combine it all into one bigger room. For sure. Um, so are you building two different structures, structures here or is the one on the right, the one on the right and the one on the left sort of the proposed one or the other? Yeah, so the one on the right was what we had showed earlier from the engineer, what he brought to us. 
And I, his would probably like ours was just kind of on the left. It's thrown together. So this is definitely not final at all. We don't even know if this many stalls or fixtures would fit with our existing septic. It's just sort of a different layout. We thought we might be able to bring to him more of an open layout, but um, yeah, it really like, it all depends on what would work with our existing septic. So there may not even be able to be that many toilets or sinks like we're thinking on the left, but I think the one on the right would probably be closer to the actual amount of fixtures we could have in there. I think the left is more of just a different concept we can try and bring to him and he would make that work with the, the fixtures that we can't have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause the one on the right, uh, like the one on the, the, the picture on the left has six sinks. So yeah. if you're limited, if you're limited to what, what the, uh, the capacity of the, of the septic system can handle then. I can see where the one on the right might make more sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think the left was more just give him something to visually look at and work with that design and then incorporate the septic into it. And we, if nothing's final here, obviously, but we just two different sort of layouts, one more open concept and the other one being more individual rooms. We just, we thought the, the one on the right, there's a lot of uh, space taken up by the big big like drywall stud walls in there and the one on the left you're kind of getting a little bit more room with more of an open concept design and maybe just like um this thin little steel walls that you'd see in some like school facilities and the one on the right's more of individual rooms but yeah we, we're open to anything we just wanted to throw a couple ideas at the designer and see what they could come up with now the the location uh, where this is going to be at the uh, at the at the beach is it is that just a beach or do they have other um, things that go on there too like is it is it near I know like the beach area in Sydney for example I mean we've got ball diamonds there as well we've got um, you know other things other events sometimes happen in and around the beach like is this a fairly busy area during the summertime for example. Yeah, for sure. So it's kind of the KMP trail actually runs on the road of the beach, the medical center road. That's part of the KMP trail. So a lot of uh, snowmobilers in the winter would stop there. And right now our existing washroom isn't open all year round. And the idea for this one would to be service people all year round. So snowmobilers in the winter and then beachgoers in the summer sort of thing. So that'll be, that'll be a lot better. And, um, yeah, the beach has a park in it too, so it, it's pretty uh, it's pretty busy on summer days for sure. Okay, so this will be a heated facility then. Yeah. And then I think there was one more. Oh, we still have. So this was yeah. also part of the word dog. Yeah. So this is more of if you guys would like to just sketch something up yourselves and we're like. I said we're open to any ideas, so this is just open floor plan with the uh, the space we've kind of been given to work with for the building footprint. And any ideas you guys have, feel free to sketch them up and send them back. We're we're pretty open to anything. Yeah, myself, I tend to like the uh, the design on the right. Uh, I agree with Pat. I think that. Um, uh, and I, I guess that's sort of where I was going in regards to the table uh, in the accessible washroom. It's like sometimes people have supplies with them where they need to transfer because they might have to do uh, internet catheterization or something like that. And sometimes they need that the other place where they can move to out of their chair or 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 however they have their setup. So it might be it might be easier to maybe to combine. The accessible washroom with the other room and make and incorporate the bench a bench in there as well. Um, uh, just an idea, though. Yeah, no, for sure. I think we can definitely give the engineer that idea, and then I think the other washrooms—they're all sort of different sizes. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, we have a little bit of room to work with there if we want to make ones bigger or smaller. Well, even if you took the, the, so you've got three rooms on the right, even if you took the first two, combine them, 
but shrunk the overall size down a little bit. And you could make that third one on the right a little bit larger. And it could also be maybe an accessible washroom, but maybe not to the extent of the first one. Yeah, for sure. That's a great idea. I also, uh, just a quick, and I, I, do you have a timeline on when you'd love those? Uh, you, you provide us with a blank floor plan. Is there a timeline on when you'd like those recommendations back so that, you know, as a committee, we could figure out how we want to draft something up if that's something we want to do? Um, when, how often do you guys meet? Quarter. Uh, quarter, quarterly, but, but we can certainly review things in between. And we can always call a special meeting if it's required as well. Okay. Um, our next meeting is the 6th of April. Do you think it's possible that any suggestions you guys have could be emailed to us before that or on that date? I think so. Uh, would would anyone be interested in coming to the meeting on the 6th of April? Sorry, what was that? Would, you, would any of you people be interested in joining us at our meeting on the 6th of April? It's at uh, 1 p.m. Second. Might be better in person with the whole committee members, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you guys yeah. wanted to sit in on a meeting and and have... It's it, it just, yeah. it just a subcommittee that's just rolling out the ideas and you know, whatever, it might be nice instead of trying to read emails if somebody was there or if you want to zoom in or whatever would work. If That's something we could certainly, that we could certainly consider as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I could actually, if I have the committee's permission, um, I could actually provide Jody with or Jody may actually already have them the um, the uh, the email addresses of each of the committee members and then that way you can reach out to them individually to provide them with a zoom link if they're able to attend. I, I, be, sorry go ahead. Yeah that'd be that'd be excellent. Perfect. I, just looking at these two plans, uh, the one on the left you said was kind of you drafted something up as your idea, correct? Yeah. I, I honestly, the, the fact that there is even that separate entrance to getting to the accessible space is, is a great feature because then you could have uh, it's easier for someone to get in and turn around and be right in there as opposed to navigating a couple of doors. So even if you're looking, I, I, I agree that the one on the right you know, it's, it's a great use of space as well as limiting your fixtures, but, you know, maybe incorporating that separate entrance into that first room on the right, making it a little bigger to include a, a, a wash, a toilet, a, a sink and a bench that could be utilized by, you know, all, or even, uh, you know, an accessibility and family washroom, you know, the term I'm loving seeing a lot lately is universal washrooms. So regardless of, of uh, your needs that it could, uh, uh, a suit those um, so that would be an, uh, something that I cannot that you know we'll talk with the committee here but put in our, our proposed drawing about having that extra entrance to make it even uh, uh, less barriers yeah that's a that's a great idea And um, Pat's mentioning universal uh, washrooms. One of the principles of universal design that I don't think we see reflected often enough in uh, commercial spaces, it's toilet height. An awful lot of people who have mobility impairment don't need a full scope accessible washroom if the toilets were not too low and if there was a grab bar. So it would actually be possible to make almost every washroom you have accessible for a larger group of people just by picking the correct toilet height and placement of a good grab bar. Well, just like in the draw, uh, in, in the drawing on the right, the, uh, the, the two rooms on the left, I mean, all you'd have to do is switch the toilet bowl with the sink and that would put the uh, toilet bowl next to the wall which would be easy to then install um, a couple of uh, handrails. 
Mm. Yeah, because we don't need the turning space if we're using um, a small rollator or canes. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can easily take one of the, all of the standard washrooms and just by adjusting the layout of how the things are placed within the washroom, you can still add that added level of accessibility. And, and the height of the toilet. Um, I have been in a few that say they're accessible and the toilets are way too low. Yeah. Or something you need a ladder to get up on top of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 Yeah, so I think that's that's basically it from us. We were just sort of looking for any input, and it doesn't have to be today by any means. Um, the, definitely some good ideas thrown out there that we can get to the engineer. But I think if you guys could get back to us either during that meeting or before that meeting, that would be awesome. And then from there, we'd be able to to take all your suggestions and incorporate them into whatever layout makes the most sense for the engineer. And I think the, yeah, those, those are some pretty doable ideas for sure. I don't think we'll be, I don't think we'll have any issues with that as long as, um, yeah, our main, our main thing is just keeping the, uh, the number of fixtures there. But I think with the space we have, we'll, we'll be able to incorporate a, a good amount of those ideas for sure. I'd like to share with you a concern from Wolf Island where we have a semi-permanent washroom at one of our docks while construction is going on. Um, it's accessible except no provision was made for clearing snow in the winter and because it's an MTO premise it's not something we can easily fix ourselves. So if your washroom is changing from seasonal to year-round please don't forget about clearing the ramp and also snow on any of the flat levels that could impair the door opening. That is a very good point. And we will have to make sure that if these, well, the plan is to have them open all year round, that the snow will be cleared and all the flat surfaces and walking areas will have to be cleared off daily for sure. Now, is that the purpose of the covered porch over the doors to so that the uh, entrance from the porch to the in interior is is the same level, I guess. And with the covered porch, it would help to, I guess, keep snow and other elements sort of off of the porch area. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, with the covered porch, I don't, I don't think you get a, nearly as much snow going into there at all. And it'd make for pretty easy maintenance for snow shoveling. Do you know the length of the ramp? The length of the ramp? Um, no, no, no. Do you know made it as well? Pardon? Well, do you know what, what the ramp will be made out of? Will it be wood or will it be like a concrete or asphalt? I think it's concrete or asphalt is what we're, we're probably looking at right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely get some uh, some things, uh, some suggestions uh, to you for, for sure. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. That, uh, did you have anything else? Um, Craig, do you have anything else? I think that's... No, that's I just, just don't really have much else to say. Um, the only one thing we never really touched on, I... The electronic wheelchair accessible doors, we only meet them in the rooms that are set up or does every door have to be one of them? Um, well, uh, for certainly the, certainly the, the entrance to, to the facility or to the um, accessible washroom or, or the designated accessible washroom would, would, uh, would, um, would, would, would be suffice to have um, an automatic door. Um, I, I think that that gives people options. Um, if they if they have trouble uh, handling a door, then then at least there's 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 one option 
uh, that they would be able to utilize. Yeah. That's just my opinion. <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's it from us. Unless you guys have any more questions. The other suggestion too, and I, I can put this uh, in an email or something if, if, if that would help. Is uh, on the backs of the doors, uh, if there could be uh, some co uh, some coat hooks, uh, either especially at the lower level, but maybe at both the regular height and a lower level, uh, because it's always nice to be able to the same as the shelf that I mentioned. It's always nice to have some place to hang something if you're traveling with a bag or obviously a coat, but if you're traveling with a bag or or, uh, or a knapsack of some kind, it's nice to be able to hang them at uh, somewhere so that, again, so they're not sitting on the floor, especially in, in, a, in a public area that's, that's, that handles a, a fair amount of traffic. It's uh, some stuff just, it's, it's nicer to be able to, 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 to hang or set up somewhere. So a couple of, uh, Cold hooks on the back of the doors would be would be quite useful. Um, maybe in each each of the of the stalls, but especially the accessible stall for sure. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, especially because we'll be open in the winter now, and people will be hanging their coats up in there as they they wouldn't have been before in the summer. But yeah, I think we could definitely coat hooks on probably all the stalls would be would be a good idea. And I think we will have to maybe do a little more research in that because wasn't it half a dozen years ago at that one school that the kid got hung on one of the hooks in the back of the doorway somewhere? The other kids bullied him and hung him by the back of his shirt. And I think yeah. there is some rules and regulations to hooks, but we will look into it. And if we are, it's a great idea. I just think we want to dig into that a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great because I know sometimes like if I go to a washroom and I have my uh, supply bag with me, um, sometimes there's no place to set them. So I'll just hang it on the back of the door and, and access the, the stuff that I need out of it from there. Um, so it, it certainly serves like a multiple purpose um, other than just hanging, you know, like your coat. But, uh, but for sure, um, we, we can put the, those suggestions together though as well. But, uh, okay, well, thank you very much. That was that was um, that was excellent. Uh, it 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 looks like there's some good options there, and uh, we uh, appreciate uh, your time uh, for that. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you guys all for having us. All right. Um, all right, uh, so should we move on to the next point then, um, the reports uh, to the Accessibility Advisory Committee? Did you want to speak to that then, uh, Jeanette? Um, sure. So I'm actually going to introduce to the committee if, if uh, Mr. Matt Mills, I believe most of you know him anyway. He, he is our communications officer and he was in attendance at the Access, Access Awards last year. Um, so I'm going to allow Matt to speak to this report. It is his report. He does all communications for the county and the township ferry. Or sorry, the county ferry. Go, uh, so go ahead, Matt. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a little difficulty with my uh, camera all of a sudden. If you'll bear with me one second, I'll try to get it started because uh, uh, I'd certainly like to uh, 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 like to see your face. One moment, please. <laughs> there I am. Oh, what a relief. To see you all through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you and good morning, all. Uh, as Jeanette said, my name is uh, Matt. I'm communications officer here at uh, Frontenac County, and I'm here today to ask for your help and your insight on matters regarding the Howe Island County Ferry. Uh, the ferry, of course, provides 24-7 on-demand ferry service between Howe Island and the mainland. Uh, uh, the boat is owned by the Ministry of Transportation Ontario. It's regulated by Transport Canada, of course. Uh, it's operated by the uh, County of uh, Frontenac. And it's paid for in part by the um, uh, good people at the Township of Frontenac Islands. 
uh, and of course, uh, 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 the residents and constituents of uh, uh, the township are the ferry's main uh, customer base, chiefly on uh, on Howe Island there. So at the uh, 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 first main council meeting on the 21st of December, that is the council meeting of the uh, county Frontenac, uh, Frontenac County rather, uh, Frontenac Islands Councillor um, uh, Greenwood Spears uh, moved that staff be directed to prepare a report uh, in consultation with you, uh, the members of the Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, the report to identify options and costing for ways that may better inform residents of Howe Island and all ferry passengers who may not have access to the internet, uh, may not be technologically savvy, or who may be living with visual, uh, cognitive, or other disabilities, uh, to notify um, uh, uh, that group of people, those folks, uh, about service interruption and news updates regarding the Howe Island County Ferry. So the scope of um, uh, uh, Councillor Greenwood Spears' uh, um, motion was an analysis of and recommendations about possible ways to improve accessible communications to, uh, uh, to ferry passengers. So the report, as it was attached to your package for, um, uh, for today, uh, outlines um, uh, uh, the staff analysis of uh, our current practices and uh, the state of accessibility matters affecting communications regarding the Howe Islander. Um, uh, uh, throughout the course of, uh, uh, of that uh, informal audit, I'd say um, uh, most are satisfied that our processes are thorough and, uh, uh, and satisfy in some cases exceed regulatory obligations. But I think that uh, uh, we need to be sure that we're not missing something there or uh, that there's more action that, um, uh, uh, that you and we can advise uh, council to, um, uh, to consider. Um, so the purpose of that report that you have there and my chance to speak with you today um, uh, is to initiate, initiate that consultation um, uh, with you, the members of the uh, uh, advisory committee, and to ask uh, that you review the attached report and make any recommendations for inclusion in a final report to, uh, uh, to council in the future. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, uh, I'm happy to um, uh, to answer any questions you may have or uh, uh, discuss any matters germane to uh, uh, to the report there. Just uh, looking at the. Report. Sorry, I got I got cut off there for I don't I don't know what happened when you first started. I just lost everything and everyone was gone. But <laughs> I'm back. Um, Is there anything? Um, uh, would you like me to uh, review to start again? Uh, no, I'm just looking. So, is the report part of the, um, uh, the PDF that you sent out, uh, Jeanette? Yes, the report was attached to the agenda. All right, I'm just scrolling through here to find it. It's um, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a few pages there, uh, Neil, um, and uh, I wouldn't want to rush you through it. Um, Essentially, the substance of it is an analysis of all the measures um, uh, we take here at the county to ensure that um, communications uh, to all constituents are as accessible as they can be, uh, with a specific focus on uh, communications regarding the um, uh, regarding the ferry. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I, I apologize for missing the first part of 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 uh, of, um, of of your when you. We're speaking. No um, problem. Were, were you looking just to sort of bring myself up to speed? You were just looking for for sort of feedback on on different forms, I guess. Or yeah, precisely. Um, uh, Councillor Greenwood Spears um, uh, 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 moved in September that um, uh, uh, that we look at this and uh, uh, and that we uh, uh, consult with members of the Accessibility Advisory Committee uh, uh, committee on it. Um, uh, about uh, uh, improving or uh, uh, you know, making recommendations about improvements that may be possible 
uh, to our process is of communications to ferry islanders. So we have a website, we use a mass email marketing tool. Um, uh, there are uh, pixelated signs, uh, uh, glow signs, uh, uh, illuminated signs rather at ferry approaches. And um, uh, uh, and there are other options, right, that are uh, uh, that are possible that may or may not be um, uh, be effective for communicating to all about uh, service interruptions and so on on the uh, uh, on the ferry, and uh, uh, and so the hope is uh, that uh, members of the um, uh, uh, of the advisory committee will review the uh, uh, the report. And uh, I certainly ask any questions that uh, uh, that you may have. Um, I'll do whatever I can to uh, to answer them for you. And um, uh, and if you have uh, uh, and if you have recommendations, um, uh, we'll synthesize them into final report to uh, uh, to council to be delivered, uh, and um, uh, and then satisfy the requirements of uh, Councillor Greenwood Spears' uh, motion there and request. Um, well, was that in regards to even th even things like? Um like wait times for for the for the ferry and yeah so this this the scope of this uh, of this report and our task is outlined by councillor greenwood spears um uh is about communications regarding the ferry uh so not about uh, uh not about the um uh, uh the physical plant that is the ferry and accessibility on using the ferry rather uh communications uh uh for um uh, uh, for everyone, uh, so that they informed about ferry service uh, uh, interruptions and updates uh, um, as thoroughly as possible. So, did you want us to review this and then just get back to you? Then is that is that sort of the idea? Uh, yes, please. If uh, uh, if uh, uh, if at all possible, that would be um, uh, that would be really really useful. Um, uh, you know, I think we're reasonably uh, thorough. I think we um, uh, we certainly satisfy uh, regulatory obligations and exceed them in several areas. Uh, but as I said, there's you know there's always the, you know the possibility that we've missed something or that there's more that uh, uh, that we could uh, recommend to council that uh, 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 that we might do. Okay, well we we, uh, we can certainly do that um, and uh, and uh, and get back with any suggestions that we might have if, if, if any and um, and uh, and, um, and and certainly let you know then sure here I, I just a quick question about the the media about using radio right a big fm and move i think were the stations identified yep the idea was that like the what you were looking at is like if we you needed to send an update because something had changed right like so that would be one of the risks associated is if there was a last minute issue that you know those broadcasts may not go out to notify the traveling population that's using the ferry correct yeah precisely and uh, and that was uh, uh, that was part of the request that came from uh, uh, councillor greenwood spears uh, i think the idea being that uh, uh, that there are people who get their information from radio. And of course, that there are folks that uh, listen to radio in their cars as a sort of a chief, uh, a chief way to, uh, uh, to get information. And there's a section so, in the report. Sorry, oh, yeah, sorry, continue. Wow. Sure, there, there is a section in the report uh, uh, outlining the, um, uh, the possibilities and, uh, uh, and the potential, uh, uh, the potential pit pitfalls of uh, uh, of uh, using radio for those purposes, and you know, also the uh, the purposes that radio might be, you know, very good for. Correct. So then, I would wonder too, and I know budgeting obviously is always a concern about rather than only using it for uh, you know those those uh, immediate instances about potentially scheduling with one of the stations. So on a daily basis, there was an update coming from uh, all of the islands across uh, you know uh, Amherst, Wolf how to, to, to everybody listening. Uh, so then if something did come up that it would be broadcasted no matter what at the same time, say potentially commuting time. Once again, I'm not sure about budgetary issues, but maybe a, a suggestion uh, to look at the potential to having a regular scheduled announcement through media of radio about the status of ferries. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that is a good idea. Um, of course, we're responsible uh, for uh, the, um, uh, the How Islander. And so uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, that would require some uh, coordination with uh, uh, MTO officials, which operates other ferries in the area as well, as well as all those others who uh, uh, who do that. And of course, 
there are um, uh, uh, sort of matters to be navigated with respect to sort of lead times, right? So uh, if as the county we were to uh, say hypothetically, um, uh, I recommend to council that uh, we purchase uh, uh, advertising space, uh, then the logistics of uh, composing those ads and getting them out in a sort of a by the minute timely fashion um, uh, you know, that's something else. That's a, that's a layer of complexity that we'd also need to uh, need to consider and uh, uh, and navigate. Um, uh, it's a you know, it would be a nice addition, I think, to any um, uh, uh, to any radio stations newscast uh, to um, uh, uh, to give ferry uh, uh, ferry updates. Um, Thanks, Matt. of course. Yeah, no problem. Matt, um, one thing I didn't see in the report is a very old fashioned low tech solution that I think works for people who are not good readers or technically savvy. And that would be a number they could call for a recorded update. I think if we looked at the entire population of Howe Island and then identified the actual number of people that would need that, it could be a feasible low cost solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I mean um, uh, that's definitely uh, that's definitely exactly the kind of uh, the kind of suggestion recommendation that uh, uh, that would be useful in this case for sure. I'll absolutely make a note of that. Uh, sorry, I, I missed part of that. What was that uh, regarding again? I was suggesting cool. that a low cost option for the very small number of people that aren't able to use any of the. Uh, communications currently in use for that ferry could be as simple as a phone number they could call to get a recording. As long as there's staff available to update that recording during a period when there's significant ferry interruption. Right. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes going back to the uh, to to the original way of doing things works better than sort of all the social media stuff. <laughs> well, what I see on Wolf Island, um, because our ferry interruptions usually aren't scheduled, and the only way you know what's going on is by going to the ferry emergency Facebook group where people are doing live posts from the ferry to keep updating you. But if you can't read and can't do Facebook from your phone, you don't have any way of knowing that unless somebody phones you to tell you. Right. Or if you have some place, like you said, to call in and get an updated message. Yes. Okay, so is there is so we can so if we um, have any other ideas than that, we can certainly it's okay then if we uh, sort of send them in your direction. Uh, yes, absolutely, please do. And uh, naturally, if you have any further questions and so on, I'm available. Were there any other questions uh, for Matt uh, for anyone today? Thanks very much indeed, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, well, thanks, Matt. Um, we'll move on to the next point then, the uh, Front Accessibility Advisory Committee uh, Annual Accessibility Status Report. Then, uh, did you want it to um, uh, address that then, Jeanette? Yeah, for sure. So this is a report that we're required to do annually and post on our website. And it really is just um, an annual report on the status of the upgrades or things that we've done over the year in terms of accessibility. So um, the update report, or sorry, the status report is, um, has a lot of similar background to the previous years. It talks about um, the County of Frontenac, talks about the townships, our statement of commitment, uh, talks a little bit about the role of the Accessibility Advisory Committee and some of the things that they've looked at through the year. And actually, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share my screen and I can just very quickly go through it with with
Okay, so is everybody seeing the um, the status report here? Uh, not yet, but it. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so it, it just talks about welcome to our, our report and um, what we've done over the year and how we've updated our multi-year plan, our statement of commitment. It talks a little bit about the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee and the things on here, things that the committee had done over the year. So the key ones, of course, are the uh, Access Award, um, the redevelopment of the county administration building from a county perspective. That was a huge one. Uh, the development of our new five-year 2023-2028 multi-year plan that was required. And then some of the upgrades that you looked at over the year were the Harlow Community Hall in North Frontenac um, this, uh, and what had been done there, um, the KMP Trail that Richard had brought a few times, um, and then as well the Aided of Local Businesses, um, which I know that, that Jana had done quite a bit as well. So, and then it just really outlines some of our achievements. So it gives a little bit of background about the KMP trail and some of the things that happened in 2022. Uh, the key ones, of course, were those benches, uh, the benches and the rest areas that went out on the trail and uh, the removal of some of the gates so that it was more accessible to get onto the trail. Uh, site plans, um, so for North Frontenac, you reviewed the Snow Road Community Hall, and it includes the updates there that were looked at. There was also the, um, so there were two times that North Frontenac came to us. One was for the Community Hall, where we were looking at the washrooms and the widening of the doorways. Um, and then the next one was the ramp and the washrooms. Um, so there were two projects that were brought forward here. And then with Central Frontenac, there was the initiative that included their uh, safer pedestrian access to the Matthew Street project was one of the things that you looked at. Uh, there was the creating accessible sidewalks to the back of the building that leads to a shared space at the public works office, as well as the power door operator and accessible washrooms there. Um, and then as well, the power door openers at the Piccadilly Community Hall. So those were some of the things that the committee looked at last year. I'm sure there's a lot more, but I just, I, I pulled these things sort of from what the committee had done. And then of course, the big one was that it's celebration of accessibility award. And it really highlights those three groups that won the award last year. So there's big highlights in there for that. And then after that, it really just looks at the standards and what we're doing. So in terms of the website, um, we're removing those barriers of uh, ensuring that our uh, website is accessible to WCAG 2.0, as well as our PDFs that are going up and our documents that are going up are in an accessible format. So those updates, all, all the PDFs are being remediated as, um, as they come along to ensure that our web content is accessible. Same with information and communications. Um, we have the Adobe Acrobat Pro, which is used to remediate our accessible PDFs. And we ensured staff training on this. So, and that's a little bit in the next report that I have coming, but we do have staff that have been trained to do this. Again, transportation, uh, the county doesn't uh, fall under that standard because the ferry doesn't meet the minimum tonnage. And then the design of public spaces standards. So for us, it was the trail. We've talked about the trail here and the upgrades that have been done there, including edging, uh, the paving and the remediation of the Verona trailhead, which was a big one. Um, and then parking. And then when we look at customer service, again, the big key thing here is the feedback. So we ensure that we have feedback processes on our website and through social media to help us with that. Um, and then again, staff training. So one thing here that I do have is that for the county, um, we do have what's called a new hire orientation that happens once a month and all new hires go through that orientation and they receive ex uh, extensive AODA training from myself. Uh, customer service is obviously the big one, but they do receive it on all of the, um, the standards. And then with employment through our HR department, we to continue to promote a diverse work group. Um, 
and then as well we are the employer so it just talks a little bit here about Frontenac as the employer it talks about how we have accessible accommodations for staff who have disabilities as well as work plans and work modification plans and then it talks a little bit here about training um, so the key training for the county last year was that um, accessible PDF training uh, which we continue to go through but um, it does help us as well reach out to any consultants that we're working with as well to ensure that all of our documents are accessible. And then just looking at what's up for 2023, um, we're going to continue to make those improvements to the Canco Trail. It will continue to come to the committee as we move that trail further north into North Frontenac. Uh, we're in the process right now of purchasing the lands for the trail. So once all that falls into place, the development of that trail will come to the committee. Um, and then we're going to continue um, the construction of the county administration building. So again, that is a, a huge one for us. So right now it is in the construction phase. The committee was able to review the construction plans and the site plans. Sonia Bolton attended our, our one of our meetings to go through that with the committee. Um, and then once we start to look at other things, once construction comes to a completion and we start moving people back into that building, again, the exterior fixtures will come back to the committee. Um, and then we're going to hopefully complete uh, the care and use of trails bylaw. We do have that through now, but it still isn't touching on whether or not um, uh, whether or not we're allowing um, motorized vehicles on certain portions of the trail. And of course, that we want to ensure that uh, that's not creating a barrier for persons with disabilities. And the last thing is that there is on the books to complete that uh, trails master plan. So those are mainly um, the big things that we have. Um, it has gone out to all four of the townships for review. Um, and again, it's, it's a work in progress. This is again from last year. So next year's um, we'll do a little more outreach with the townships to make sure that what's happening there is getting captured in this plan and captured at our meetings. <laughs> so that being said, there is a recommendation on, on the report um, that in accordance with the um, integrated accessibility standards that we post this on our website and that we also forward it to our lower tiers. So if there's any questions, I would be happy to answer those or we just need a mover and seconder for the motion. Uh, sorry, Jan uh, Janet. When is the uh, use of the construct? Use of the construction uh, and renovations are going well um, with the township. They are behind. So the construction of the county administration building is somewhat behind schedule. Um, they've come up with some glitches, but uh, the hope is, and I believe I have it in my next update report as well. The hope is that um, we are in there by December twenty twenty three. Yeah. but currently they're working on the basement. There was a lot of remediation that had to be done in terms of the amount of asbestos that was found in the building. We knew there was asbestos there. We did have engineers come through the building before the RFP even went out, um, but there was just far more than what was anticipated. So the remediation of that asbestos really held the project up because naturally everything had to stop when that remediation was happening. So we are hopefully back on track um, and it is hoped that we will be back in that building by 2023 um, for any of the, the newer members that didn't see the plans. Um, the building is being fully renovated because it is an old house. We, we call it the old house, but that's exactly what it is. It's an old house that's been sort of converted into office spaces and it's not really conducive. So. So when the county had a service delivery review done back in 2013, one of the recommendations was um, to look at the redevelopment of this, this facility simply because it's not conducive to a great work environment because we had people working out in the hallways. Um, we had four people in one office and you know the noise level, it just wasn't conducive to a great workspace. So we started out with that RFP to redo, we worked with council to redevelop this, this space. And then of course the CRCA came on board. So 
it's now going to be a joint space with the, both the county and the CRCA. The CRCA will be in the basement, which is where they're working at now, which is the former paramedic suite. And then our office will be upstairs, but this will include a number of new meeting rooms, a number of new accessible washrooms. The old house building only had two washrooms for a staff complement of about 40 people, which didn't really work. And then there was washrooms down in the FPS suite where the only accessible washrooms were. So anybody who required an accessible washroom had to take elevators to get to another area of the building. So it will include um, a whole new front foyer, which was brought to the committee. And in that front foyer will be a, a nice um, uh, um, universal washroom. I really like that term. Thank you. <laughs> um, we'll have a nice new universal washroom there. There will also be a full universal washroom at the uh, side of the building, or sorry, at the back of the building where the new council chamber is going. So when you go into a council chamber, it'll have its own entrance, with its own accessible doorway. There's a universal washroom there so that anybody from the public coming in to watch their to attend council meetings is able to do so. Um, and then I, I think that was really it for the accessible upgrades. I, I know that there still is the elevator there. So there is, there is still a two, it is still a two story building. There is still the elevator there. Most of the services that are going to be meeting with the public, such as planning services, clerk's office, things like that are on the main level where people do not have to get on that elevator. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we're hoping that it will be done by 2023. At present, our council meetings are being held in the Township of South Frontenac Council Chamber, which is a beautifully redone council chamber that was done a few years back. It's fully accessible. There's an accessible doorway from the street. Um, it has an accessible washroom for anybody that requires it. So that's where all of our council meetings are being held right now. Um, our committee meetings will likely move to there as well once they start up again. So yeah, yeah, it sounds sounds like a busy time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so we're looking for a motion then on that. Uh, yeah, so I just require a mover and a seconder for that motion. I'll move. And a seconder. I'll second. And then you just need to call the question. Yeah. Neil, sorry, your sound is popping out. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we just uh, need, so we're just all in favor then? Is that what you're? Yes. Is that what you're yes. So, all, right. Right, all in favor. All right. Uh, so we'll move on to. Um, the next point. Thank you for that for that uh, information, uh, Jeanette. That was kind of clear. Yes. Yeah. So this report really is just for information, and I think I just covered everything that I had in it um, in the last one. Again, the one for the KMP trail. Um, the benches are in place, and um, they're doing the the stone pads now for the benches. So that will really start to move ahead in the spring. Um, the conversion of accessible documents, I think we already spoke about this, but um, one thing that I would point out is that we, we have had seven of our administrative staff that did attend the uh, New Horizons back on December 9th, and they have had that accessible document training for PDFs. It's really quite a, a process to convert a PDF to an accessible document. Um, and quite a few things that need to go through. But uh, so they have received that training. Um, and in terms of our website, if um, some of you may recall back in December 2020, one, 2020, sorry, we had to pull all of our documents off of our website that were not accessible to comply with the um, January 2021 deadline of having your website and content uh, fully accessible. So those documents came down. Um, in terms of progress, I believe most of them are now back up and we're just now working on ensuring that future ones that do go up are in an accessible format. 
And then I believe I already spoke about the redevelopment of the uh, administration building, but in terms of where it's at right now, level zero, which is what we're calling the basement, which is where the paramedic suite was. And it was actually where we had our previous accessibility advisory committee meetings back in that big Frontenac room. So that uh, has all the electrical revisions have been accepted and they're proceeding now to drywall. So the drywall is, has commenced going up. Um, and then in the main building, which is uh, the administration offices for the county staff, all the abatement has been completed and they're just waiting for spring demolition. So there are two additions going on to that space. One is um, at the rear of the building, which will start in the spring. And then to the, I'm trying to think, to the, to the east of the building, there was um, an addition that was put on a number of years ago. And uh, you may recall that's where the Bud Clayton room was. That's where the HR office was for those who have been in, in there before. Um, so that is all coming down. That whole addition is coming down because it's not the greatest. Uh, and they're going to dig deeper down into the soil so that there'll be a two story so that that's where the new council chamber will be going. And then in the basement, that is where the paramedic suite will be going. But the paramedic suite in the basement, it will be a full walkout basement, to my understanding. So, um, so they're working away at that as well. And then um, the other piece that I had on there was just training of staff and new council. So um, this is a new council term. So I just wanted to point out that all of the, during our um, joint orientation sessions with the townships, the township councils, they have all received their AODA training, um, as well as I mentioned earlier that all staff receive AODA training um, as they come on board. We do have a monthly new hire orientation process at the county where all new staff attend this sort of, it's a sort of a full day orientation where each department uh, gives them a little bit of an overview about themselves. And that is where they receive their full AODA training. So that ensures that we're fully compliant with, with all the legislation. So it really was just for information, but I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. I don't have any questions. Uh, does anybody else have uh, anything they'd like to ask? No. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Jeanette. That was, uh, it, sounds, it sounds like a busy time. <laughs> um, should we move on then to uh, the township updates? Um, so I'm, I'm not, if there are any questions, they were attached to the agenda, but um, Eric is here if there are any questions or Jody is here if there are any questions for Central or James is here if there were any questions for South. Or if any of them would like to speak to their updates. Hi, it's Jody with Central Frontenac. Um, I just want to let everyone know that on our next report, uh, we will include all of our projects for 2023. Uh, we apologize for the delay. Our budget was just passed, so we weren't sure which projects we'd be doing, but we'll make sure uh, that we send them all out to you in our next report. Jeanette, may I just add that South Rottenack will be looking to increase their profile with this committee over the next uh, year and into the future. Um, I took a, the agenda from today's meeting uh, regarding the Sherbet Lake um, Beach project, and I shared that with the uh, public services group um, to more or less suggest that as we have new builds coming down the pipe that um, it would be very worthwhile for them to uh, particip participate in a similar consultation. So. Um, there'll be more involvement from South Frontenac um, in the coming months. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for those uh, updates. Um, we'll move on. I don't think that there's any communications uh, or other business. Uh, should we just move to... Uh, um, Pick a date for the next meeting then. 
Um, yes, yeah, so just to discuss the next the next meeting, I wanted to reach out to the committee to see what is working for everyone. I know that in the past, we've had a number of members who it's it's difficult to travel, uh, appreciating that this committee, you know, for the majority of you are facing, you know, disabilities where it's a bit difficult to travel. I know that Mr. Halliday has had difficulties attending in person as well. So we have kept them over Zoom. Um, but just wanted to reach out to the committee on your thoughts of what you want to do in terms of perhaps moving to an in-person meeting. Um, as I mentioned, we are hosting most of our meetings right now at the Township of Central Frontenac, or sorry, Township of South Frontenac, uh, which is uh, where James uh, is representing. And we could go with their uh, council chamber if you wanted to maybe look at a summer meeting where we're in person that might, you know, the weather's good. Just wanted to reach out and see what everyone's schedules are, um, because everybody has busy work schedules as well, that what works best for this committee. Well, for, for myself, I mean, if it if we're gonna, it, it, it's winter time to obviously present challenges, uh, especially if you use, um, uh, you, you know, a chair, uh, for example, uh, which is what I use um, you, with the snow and the ice and whatnot, it becomes a bit of a challenge. So, so if, yeah, if, I mean, during this, the nicer, warmer months, uh, I'd certainly be open to uh, having a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. Um, our next two meetings will be in June, July, and around October, is that correct? Um, so basically the committee meets um, four times, what's man it's under, under the um, committee's mandate, you are required to meet four times a year um, or should meet four times a year. We could meet more if it's needed. So usually it's quarterly. So with March, we're looking at April, May, June, it would be the next meeting um, and then June and then September. And September, of course, is the month where we start looking at uh, ensuring that we have um, the nominations process ready to go for the access award. And then again in December. But that's not set in stone. So, but we're probably they, looking at June for the next meeting. If we do have an in-person meeting, will it still be available through Zoom? Yes, so we do have hybrid meetings. So if somebody's okay. not able to come in person, they can certainly zoom in. Yeah, I'd, I'd certainly be open to that, uh, especially during the the, the the months that have less snow. <laughs> I'm happy to meet in person <laughs> as long as I'm able to zoom in if there's a problem with the ferry. <laughs> okay yeah sometimes it's, sometimes it's not the weather right <laughs> oh yeah i'm also very happy for in person but agree if, if zoom is still uh provided as well so that if if we can't make it we can still attend yes for sure and um and what what day works best for 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 most people like monday tuesday wednesday is there a specific day that works best for everybody? I'm good with a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Well, I out of those Wednesdays are best for me. Mondays and Wednesday. Tuesdays, I I can't typically get away. So okay. Wednesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays. So Wednesday sounds like a pretty good day. Okay, so um, so the Wednesdays in June. We would either be the 7th or the 28th because the uh, the 14th, um, James and I, uh, most of us will likely be at the AMCTO conference. So that week is out for us. I know Wednesday the 21st is County Council. So we could do either the 7th of June or the 28th of June. I, I propose the 7th. Does the 7th work for everybody? Yes. And 
James, could I just quickly ask with you, are you able to find it very quickly? Is is your council chamber available that day? Uh, give, me, give me two seconds. Um, I'll chime in in a second here. Jeanette, what's the address of that um, location? It is 44. Oh, I knew somebody was going to ask me that. It's... um. Give me one minute. It is 4432 George Street. Sorry, Jeanette, did we decide on June 7th? Yes. Okay, just one second. So, Janet, the best way for you to come when you get off the ferry is you go straight out Sydenham Road till it ends. Then you hang a left and um, you'll see the, the, the Sydenham High School on one side and a public school on the other. So you'll hit the public school and, and then Sydenham High School and that's George Street. And it's right by the library and it has an accessible front entrance. I believe that's the building I was in for our very first meeting. Yes. Or my first meeting. Okay. Calculating travel time. It appeared that it is open. Uh, I don't know for certain, but I think we should be okay. Okay, so we can plan for June 7th and maybe James, if we find out it's not available, we I can reach out to the committee and say it's not available that day. Does either the Thursday work or we'll, we'll look at, at another option. So Janet, just a quick question for you. Is it easier for you to walk onto the ferry and I just pick you up? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. But thank you. Okay, so Mr. Chair, we just need a motion to adjourn. I get a motion to adjourn then, please. First and seconder. First on motion. Second. Okay, perfect. And all in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a great you. week. Bye. Bye.